today is a sacred day of resurrection. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ kept the Passover, and on the following day, which was the Feast of Unleavened Bread, He suffered on the cross. Then He rose to life early on the third day among those who had fallen asleep. This amazing work of God is recorded in detail in the four books of the Gospel. God was resurrected on the third day from the dead so that mankind can be set free from the slavery of death and participate in the glorious resurrection through our faith in God. We are granted this living hope by this day, the sacred day of resurrection. This is why we cannot talk about Christian faith without Resurrection Day. God placed the meaning of the feast in the Law of Moses and prophesied that these things would surely take place. So today, we are participating in the sacred feast of Resurrection Day, upholding the will of God who said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and I am the resurrection and the life. Then, let's ruminate once again on the meaning of the feast, Resurrection Day. When we go back to the situation 2,000 years ago, on the day after Jesus kept the Passover, all the Jews witnessed Him carrying the cross and walking up the hill of Golgotha. They even watched Him breathing His last on Golgotha. A soldier even pierced the side of Jesus with a spear to confirm His death. After these events, on Sunday, it was reported that Jesus rose to life from the dead. This was an unbelievable incident throughout all of Israel. However, it was already prophesied very clearly that He would be resurrected from the dead on the third day. When Jesus rose exactly as the Word had said, when the soldiers reported what had happened, the chief priests and the religious leaders gathered, saying, Do not tell anyone about this, but you are to spread a rumor, saying, Jesus' disciples came during the night and stole His body away. In the book of Matthew, we can find this scene where they gave the soldiers a large sum of money. While false rumors circulated among the people, truth was also made known to people. The disciples began to deliver this amazing message to all people that those who believe in Christ can participate in the glory of resurrection even though they die. Today, this Christian faith began to be preached from Jerusalem to regions of Asia Minor and all throughout Europe. The cause of this was the event of resurrection. And 3,500 years before the resurrection took place, there were prophecies about it, even in the time of Moses. Let us see Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 10. Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you enter the land I am going to give you, and you reap its harvest, bring to the priest a sheaf of the first grain you harvest. They had to bring to the priest a sheaf of the first grain. This is how the name of the Feast of First Fruits came about. Here's the way of the sheaf before the Lord, 
so that it will be accepted on your behalf. The priest is to wave it on the day after the Sabbath. In today's calendar, what day of the week is the day after the Sabbath? In the Law of Moses, given 3,500 years ago, it is already specified that Jesus' resurrection should take place on Sunday. Let's go to Exodus chapter 14, verse 21. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind, and it turned into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them, and all of Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. When did this happen? During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He made the wheels of their chariots come off so they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, Let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. Exodus 14 describes the origin of the Feast of First Fruits. About 3,500 years ago, the Israelites kept the Passover in Egypt. And from the next day, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, they suffered difficulties and hardships until they crossed the Red Sea. On the 22nd day of the first month of the sacred calendar, the Israelites completely crossed the Red Sea early in the morning by hindering the Egyptian army who were chasing after the Israelites. God watched over his people from the pillar of fire at night and from the pillar of cloud during the day so they could cross the Red Sea safely. The time when they crossed the Red Sea was the early morning of the 22nd day of the first month by the sacred calendar. Based on this event, God appointed the Feast of First Fruits. This event also relates to the meaning of baptism. Going into the water represents the Israelites entering the Red Sea. Coming out of the water represents the Israelites landing after crossing the Red Sea. God placed the meaning of baptism in those events. So the 22nd day of the first month by the sacred calendar is the Feast of First Fruits, that is, the Resurrection Day. What is the significance of the meaning of resurrection? The wicked who chased us will be destroyed, and we who are with Christ will be resurrected into the body of righteousness. God let us know His will through the meaning of the Feast of First Fruits. This event took place in the early morning in order to help us remember the work that He carried out. God commanded the Feast of First Fruits to be kept annually on the day after the Sabbath, which is Sunday, after keeping the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. This is why the Feast of First Fruits should always be on the day after the Sabbath day, and the great work of God had to take place in the early morning. When we look at the New Testament, we can confirm that every prophecy was fulfilled exactly according to the Word of God. Nowadays, since the churches in the world do not understand the prophecy of the meaning of the feasts, they claim that we should worship on Sunday because Jesus was resurrected on Sunday. However, the Sabbath day is a separate worship, and as for the resurrection day, 
We are also keeping it on Sunday, aren't we? It is an annual feast kept once a year. Those who understand the feast of the Old Testament can easily discern that resurrection is not related to weekly worship. Let's see Matthew chapter 28, verse 1. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, what day is the first day of the week after the Sabbath? Sunday. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for the angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. It means that he was resurrected, right? Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Everyone, Jesus' resurrection was such an extraordinary event. Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, rose from the dead on the third day. He walked around, spoke, and taught the disciples. Because of that, numerous people came to believe that Jesus was God. Those who had a firm faith said, We will live, even though we die. And whoever lives by faith in Christ will never die, but enter eternal life. By fulfilling the prophecies in Exodus 14 and Leviticus 23 about early morning and the day after the Sabbath day, Jesus let us know that he came as a sacrifice for the feast of first fruits. Let us continue with Luke 24. Those who do not understand the meaning of the feast of the Old Testament can never understand why Jesus had to be resurrected early in the morning on the first day after the Sabbath. Luke chapter 24, verse 1. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wandering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and when will he be raised again? On the third day, be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Jonah, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. Like this, Matthew and Luke also recorded about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which took place early in the morning, 2,000 years ago. Then why didn't Jesus Christ fulfill the work of resurrection on any other day, but early on Sunday, the first day after the Sabbath? It was to fulfill the prophecy of the Feast of First Fruits, as we saw in Leviticus 23 and Exodus 14. 
Let us find an answer to this matter by going to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is what? It says your faith will be futile. When we look at the prophecy of the Feast of First Fruit, we can understand Jesus must be resurrected. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. Verse 20. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be what? All will be made alive. The Bible tells us that all people can receive eternal life and be saved. Verse 23. But each in his own turn. Who is first? Jesus is the first fruits that was prophesied in the Old Testament. The reality of the sheaf of the first grain in Exodus 14 and Leviticus 23 was Jesus Christ. God appointed the day when the Israelites crossed the Red Sea after the Feast of Unleavened Bread as the Feast of First Fruits. God explains all these matters in the Old and New Testaments as prophecy and fulfillment. In verse 23, it is written, But each in his own turn, Christ, the first fruits. Then, when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. Who fulfilled the prophecy of the first fruits of those who had fallen asleep? Jesus Christ fulfilled it completely. Then, let's see what happened on the day of his resurrection 2,000 years ago. Let's take a look at Luke 24, verse 13. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them but they were kept from recognizing him. Jesus rose to life, but the two disciples who were on the way to Emmaus were kept from recognizing him, although Jesus was walking along with them. Verse 17. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened here in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who is going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said and all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. 
When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened. Only then were they able to do what? And they recognized him. This is the meaning contained in the bread of Resurrection Day. Even though Jesus walked along with them for about seven miles, they didn't recognize him. Only after he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, did they recognize him, and then he disappeared from their sight. Verse 32, they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. This magnificent event of Jesus' resurrection as the first fruits of those who had fallen asleep took place 2,000 years ago. Because Jesus Christ was resurrected, we too can have hope. He who believes in God will live, even though he dies. Whoever lives and believes in God will never die. The same hope was given to us through his resurrection. Let's go to John 11. Let's read from verse 24. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am who? I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. He gave us living hope, saying, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Satan led all mankind to sin in heaven, brought them to this earth, and bound them to the pain of death. However, Jesus Christ came to this earth, breaking the power of death, and revealed the way to eternal life through His glorious work on this Resurrection Day. In the Old Testament, this feast is also known as the Feast of First Fruits. This is why anyone who lives in Christ has the living hope for resurrection. As for those in this world who first believed and passed away, the Bible does not describe them as dead. How are they described? They have fallen asleep. They are sleeping for a short while. Then, when will all of them awake? The Bible gives us hope, as it is written, that everyone will awake and be resurrected or transformed in the morning of resurrection. Let us see one more verse in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will do what? Bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in Him. All these words will be fulfilled in the morning of resurrection. Verse 15. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left to the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds will be transformed and caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so, we will be with the Lord forever. 
Therefore, encourage each other with these words. As it is written in 1 Thessalonians 4, those who are embraced in the arms of God first, after living their lives of faith, that is, those who pass away physically, will all be clothed with resurrection among those who have fallen asleep on the day when Christ comes down at the end as the last judge. On that day, we will not be resurrected with flesh and blood, and we will no longer be bound by flesh and blood, but being transformed into a spiritual body. The holy will of God is to lead us to a better world, where we can enjoy the blessings of eternal life and happiness forever. To the saints of the early church, who are grieved and tormented, remembering the agony of Jesus' crucifixion, the news of His resurrection brought great joy to them. It was not only a matter of Jesus coming back to life, but it was a great event that gives us hope that we too can be resurrected. That is why this Resurrection Day holds such a very important meaning in our faith. It is written that without the truth of resurrection, our faith would be futile and meaningless. Jesus Christ allowed His children to realize the meaning of the Feast of First Fruits and the Resurrection Day. Following the example of Christ, we will also partake in the bread of Resurrection Day, so that He may open all our spiritual eyes to understand correctly His divine nature. However, the churches in the world nowadays insist that we have to eat boiled eggs on the Resurrection Day. We can find teachings about breaking bread on Resurrection Day, but nowhere in the Bible can we find any testimony about sharing colored eggs, eating them, or giving stuffed bunnies to each other. It is nothing but a pagan tradition. Today, through the meanings contained in the Old and New Testaments, we came to understand that Jesus Christ came as the sacrifice for the Feast of First Fruits and had to rise from the dead on the day after the Sabbath, Sunday. In the Old Testament, the priest was to wave a sheaf of the first grain. So this feast was also called the Feast of the Wave Offering. Likewise, Resurrection Day has many other names. God broke the power of death and Hades and taught us the meaning of this day, saying, Whoever believes in me will receive life and partake in resurrection by giving eternal thanks and glory to God Elohim who gives us this joy and hope. I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.